Hello, it is me and my tea again. And I, mm, I am very excited because not only do I have one Illuma Crate box to unbox, I have two, and I am so excited to see the gorgeous books that are inside. So, without any more further ado, with our trusty pocket knife, let us get into it, shall we? So, if you've never see, been here before, what is Illuma Crate? Illuma Crate is a fabulous monthly subscription box and they have two options. They have a book only option, which is what I have, and they also have a book and goodies item. And every month you get a beautiful book that has been redesigned and has really beautiful features. It could have sprayed edges, gilding, signed by the author, and they're just so mm, aesthetically pleasing and gorgeous. And I'm so excited to see this one. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we have some squiggly paper wormies. I'll just toss them over there. Woo! Okay, so I was lucky enough that I could remember which box had which. So in this box, we have our beautiful July book, and the theme was Magical Menagerie, and oh my gosh, I need to first get it out of its um, plastic prison so you can see it in all of its wonderfulness. So one moment, tease. All right, so I've gotten the plastic off, and our book for July was the Phoenix Keeper. Oh my gosh, look at the beautiful gilding. We have beautiful sprayed tops, bottoms, and sides. The artwork is absolutely stunning. Here is the back of our book. What does the inside look like? Ooh, okay. So here is our um, end pages. I kind of feel like the end page art, it's really nice, but I feel like it's not quite the style of the cover. Do we have something? Oh my gosh, the hardback. That is absolutely stunning. I personally absolutely love Phoenixes and whoever did the artwork for the hardback. Oh my gosh, you are so talented. That is so beautiful. And it looks like on the back we have a little advert for the magical zoo that is part of this story. Let's see, do the other end pages, are they the same or different? Okay, so the other end pages are different. Same um, artwork style, different design. Very nice. Oh. Okay, let's see what other goodies we have in here. Yes, it is signed by our wonderful author. And, ooh, it looks like we have a special letter from the author with, like, little illustrations. And what else do we have? Ooh, wow, this is a really nice, long letter from the author with lots of beautiful illustrations on it. I love that, or drawings. And we have a map of our zoo. Very nice. What else? <gasps> Ooh! I think this book has a couple of nice pictures in it because here we have like part one and we have an illustration. Are there more? Okay, I'm flipping through, hoping to not see any spoilers. Do do do. Oop, I saw one. Oh, now I'm too far. Da, da, da. But it looks like there's some other designs on here. So that's really cool. Beautiful illustrations. Absolutely love that. So let's see what this book has to say for itself before we get into our next box. It says, as head phoenix keeper at a world-renowned zoo for magical creatures, Alea's childhood dream of conserving critically endangered firebirds seems closer than ever. There's just one glaring caveat. Her zoo breeding program hasn't functioned for a decade. When a tragic phoenix heist sabotages the flagship and the flagship, um, flagship at a neighboring zoo, Alea must, pro blah, blah, blah. Alea must provide her derelict facilities for, prove her derelict facilities are fit to take the reins, but saving an entire species from extinction requires more than stellar animal ha handling skills. Carnav- car Ugh, what are words? Carnivorous water horses, temptuous thunderhawks, mischievous dragons. Alea has no problems with those beasts. Inspiring zoo patrons, that's another story. Mustering the courage to ask for help from a hotshot griffin keeper at the zoo's most popular exhibit, virtually impossible. 
especially when that hotshot Griffin Keeper happens to be her arch rival from college, Lucinda, an annoyingly brooding and insufferable know-it-all with the grace of a basilisk and the face of a goddess, who's convinced that Alea's beloved phoenixes would s serve their cause better as an active performer than a passive conservation exhibit. With the world watching and threats of poachers looming, her success is no longer merely a matter of keeping her job. She is the keeper of phoenixes, and the future of the species now rests on her shoulders. Ooh. So that's going to be a really fun read and absolutely gorgeous read, too. Okay, so now it is time for our second box. And I think if I remember right, the theme for this month box was almost kind of Taylor Swift. I think it was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the theme for this box was Look What You Made Me Do. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Well, aren't you gorgeous? Um, one moment, I have to free this one also from its plastic prison. All right, so our book for August, look what you made me do, is Mistress of Lies. And I don't know if anyone remembers the classic collection from Litjoy, but this cover, the artwork, I wonder if it's the same person that designed it because it looks very um, similar to like the Jane Eyre or the Pride and Prejudice books that Litjoy did. Um, I'm absolutely loving it. So we have a solid black top, solid black bottom, and a really beautiful... Um, night scene of like a palace or a city. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the cover of like Babel. So kind of dark and mysterious. I really love that. Um, on the back. Okay. So this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine when it comes to special edition books. Um, do we like there being so many like praise quotes on the back of a book. I can understand for it being in a shop to get people to buy it, but I feel like if they've gone to the effort of changing up the design of the cover for a special edition and we already have it, do we actually need the blurbs on the back? Um, I don't know. Comment thumbs up emoji if you like there being blurbs on the back and comment a thumbs down emoji if you don't like it because I, I really am not the biggest fan of there being so many like one or two fine it's okay but there's one two three four five six seven eight there's eight of them on the back um I don't know that's just my little mm, peeve but yeah, I'm really interested to see how many of you agree or disagree, but I'm not the biggest fan of so many blurbs on the back. I'd rather a nice quote or just maybe like two or three. So let's see what else we have. Oh my goodness, we have an absolutely stunning um, end page art. Look at that. Uh, I feel like this is going to be quite the um, sultry book. I don't know. Anything going from um, that little artwork right there. Oh, and then we have another one over here. Interesting. What does our naked book? No design underneath the dust jacket. But here we have our hardback design. And it looks like it's kind of the continuation of the design on our end pages. So there's like the full design. That is absolutely beautiful. I love that. And it kind of reminds me of, um, what is it, A Study in Drowning. I think kind of had a similar design to it. I wonder if it's the same illustrator. But let's see what else we have. So we have title page. Doo -doo -doo. Um, we have the front page. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like this is a digital signature, not a real signature. So any collector's. Um, be aware it's a it's a digital and not a real signature. Oh, we have a content note, so I guess content note or trigger warnings. So yeah, the, some of these Illuminate books um, are a bit more 
adult. They're more adult than young adult. And this one has certain content, murder, gore, magic, and stuff like that. So um, just be forewarned if you're interested in this book. It does have certain topics that might not be um, younger reader or more sensitive reader friendly. We have our letter from the author, if the camera will focus, with the same digital signature at the bottom. Nice. Let's see, do we have any bonus content in the back? Um, acknowledgements. Oh, shoot. Just saw a spoiler. That's the problem with flipping through. Sometimes I spoil myself. Oh, well. But yeah, so here's this book. Let's see what it has to say for itself. It says, Fate is a cruel mistress. The daughter of a powerful but disgraced blood worker, Sean, has spent her entire life perfecting her magic and building her network of spies and gathering scraps of power. Now to protect her brother, she assassinates their father and takes her place as head of the family, and that is only the start of her revenge. Samuel is a bastard who, with a terrible gift, when he stumbles upon the first victim of a magical serial killer, he is drawn into the world of sorcery and intrigue he's worked so hard to avoid, and is pulled deeply into the ravenous and bloodthirsty court of the Vampire King. Tasked to discover the identity of the killer cutting a bloody swath through the city, Samuel, Sean, and a mysterious royal worker, Isaac, finds themselves growing ever closer to each other. But Sean's plans are treacherous as she lures Samuel into her complicated web of treason and vengeance, he must decide if the good of their nation is worth the cost of his soul. Ooh. So it looks like we have, like, political intrigue, a little bit of spice, and a murder mystery, and magic. This one is gonna be really good. It's so... It's like, this one is so dark and moody, and this one is, like, so upbeat and cheerful. And it's... I love that they're, like, both my personalities in two books. So, um, tell me with a comment down below which is your favorite. Use a black heart emoji if you are interested in the Mistress of Lies, and use, if you're able to use on your device, the Phoenix emoji, and if you can't, the orange heart emoji for the Phoenix Keeper for which one you like. So, black heart emoji, Phoenix or orange heart emoji, let me know down below. I think it's really fun doing these little secret emojis in my past couple of videos. I think the last one got up to 30, so that is really cool, and I love seeing people's inputs. So yeah, that being said, I definitely have some upbeat and moody reading to do, and I'll definitely be needing lots of tea for both of these books. And speaking of tea, if you're interested in what tea I'm drinking, it is Topaz from Club Magic Hour. It is a caramel apple tea, and I absolutely love it during the fall. So, mm, chef's kiss. Ah, that being said, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you're interested in checking out another video, go ahead and click right here. And if you're new, welcome to my channel and go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there so that you never miss my videos ever again. And if you want to help support my channel, do consider becoming a channel member. There are three options down below and every little bit helps. So a big shout out to Penny and Christina for supporting my channel and helping me do all the wonderful things that I do. That being said, thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!